Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna look at implementing a high pass filter for the Fostex T900A Super Tweeter. And so I featured this in a previous video and we looked at its performance, but in this video, I wanna look at what is actually required to implement a successful high pass filter that achieves our target slopes and our target crossover point. And so, um, Fostex includes with the driver a suggested schematic, which is simply a second order high pass with a one millihenry or one microfarad capacitor and then a 0.15 micro millihenry inductor. Sorry, uh, getting my uh, components mixed up. But anyways, uh, so to start off in this video, we're going to implement Fostex's own suggested schematic. And so you can see here, this is the resulting frequency response as an overlay uh, between the raw response in blue and then the green with with the uh, with how the second order has an effect on the frequency response. And so you can see here that it's a around a 10 kilohertz high pass, but then we still have very strong content right down to five kilohertz and it's only about six or seven db down uh, from the nominal sensitivity and so if we look at a csd plot here we can see that not only is that producing content down to five kilohertz but that content is very colored and in, in that it has a lot of stored energy and you can see it ringing out there and so just to show you, this is actually what we're after. I just drew in by hand what we're trying to achieve, a nice steep high pass filter centered at around eight kilohertz. And so in this video, we're gonna look at what is required to achieve that. And so we're gonna use measurement, uh, we're gonna use uh, software and try to wrestle this tweeter into submission. And so out of the box with this high pass filter suggested by Fostax, the tweeter certainly has its limitations. Um, but we'll see if we can actually uh, un uncrack this tweeter and getting it sounding the way that we want. And so looking at the impedance curve for the driver, we can see that there is a strong impedance spike uh, centered around the rise in the frequency response that we're seeing. And so one of the challenges with doing a high pass filter with a large spike like that is that we're not going to be able to use textbook filters. Uh, we're going to have to bring it into some software. Now, the first thought that I had when I saw this peak was that to implement a conjugate filter to flatten the impedance so that we can get some predictability uh, when developing our high pass filter. And so I brought the uh, impedance sweep uh, and test data into the uh, Vituix CAD software. And I was able to get uh, the impedance flattened. Here we have in the cyan, we have the uh, the raw impedance and then after we implement our conjugate uh, this is what it should look like and so it was comprised of these three components and so when we're now able to implement a kind of more of a textbook high pass filter and get more predictable re results and so uh, with the with the uh, circuit that you see here uh, this is the predicted in the software and then this is what was the result when we actually built the circuit and then measured it with our DAT speaker tester. And so you can see here uh, that it does actually go the other way and produces a dip at that resonance. But uh, nonetheless, um, we uh, then decided to see what would happen if we did a second order high pass, the same uh, high pass suggested by Fostex. And so you can see here the green is without the conjugate and then the red is with it. And so we see we do see an improvement in the response, but it's not nearly enough to get us to where we want to be as far as our target uh, frequency response curve. And so uh, the next thing that I decided to do just merely out of frustration was to start messing around with various topologies in the crossover. And I ended up coming up with this really unusual fourth order with a uh, resistor to ground. And this is like, I say unusual, and it's simply because the values are completely backwards. Normally with a typical fourth order, um, you would have the small value here and then a half, basically it's about 50% uh, of the uh, the, the previous capacitor. So C2 would be 50% of C1 in this instance, but we actually see that it worked out that the uh, capacitor in the, in the upstream had to be more larger. Um, and so uh, implementing that in the 
Rhyturic software produced this frequency response. And so it's it's pretty close to where we want to be. It actually uh, changes the tilt that you see here in the upper treble. It levels that out and then it really kind of forces things into submission. So we have that peak there at around five kilohertz and you can see how this fourth order is really kind of pushing it down and getting it to where we want to be. So rigging up the the uh, proposed schematic with alligator clips and rigging it up and measuring the actual frequency response. You can see here an overlay between the raw and our fourth order high pass, bringing that down and creating a much more reasonable target slope. And so uh, looking again at the CSD plot, dramatic improvement in the CSD plot, especially if you compare them side by side, you can see the distinct differences uh, in the overall time domain performance. Uh, looking at the impedance sweep, um, we don't see anything too severe, and in fact, it results in a flat phase response across its bandwidth. Um, so, just in conclusion here, uh, the T900A presents some challenges for a proper high pass filter implement implementation. Um, I did get some comments uh, in on Facebook and in, uh, in different forums, and that that the T900A ultimately uh, from other experience other users experience is that they ended up selling the t900a because they weren't able to get uh, where they needed to be and so that made me suspicious which goes back to the why i was looking wanted to look at this and see what is actually required because i was suspicious that um, the published recommended crossover by Fostex uh, wasn't going to be nearly good enough to get the tweeter to where he needed it to be. Um, so in stock form, the tweeter had a very hashy, resonancy kind of character that, um, you know, didn't, didn't really, wasn't acceptable. But once I implemented this, the tweeter took on a completely different character. It was much more refined, smoother sounding, much more air and detail in the sound. And so um, just kind of a lesson and a cautionary tale on this that uh, sometimes a more methodical approach is needed where you need to actually look at the test data and see where you're at. And so um, generally speaking, after we made the changes, the tweeter is up there with some of the best that I've heard. It's very detailed, very dynamic, has great output capability that doesn't uh, sound constrained or any compression. And so the tweeter is, is really nice. Um, and so the next step for me at least is to see how the new horn lens uh, plays out in terms of its subjective sound character. And so we have it set up uh, at our listening room and we're listening quite extensively to the stock T900A to kind of get an understanding of uh, the overall sound stage uh, in terms of width and depth and and then uh, implementing the horn lens so we can get a really good uh, sense of what changes, does it get better, does it get worse. So stay tuned on uh, more of that. Uh, but for now, um, high pass filter for Fostex T900A. Take care and have a great day.